स्टूडेंट गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर ओके वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट चैप्टर वन नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस एयर वाटर एंड लैंड नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस एयर वाटर एंड लैंड आर द फैक्टर्स इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर सस्टेनिंग द लिविंग वर्ल्ड ऑन द अर्थ एंड फॉर फुलफिलिंग देयर बेसिक नीड दे आर कॉल्ड नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस यू कैन सी दैट सम थिंग्स इन द पिक्चर आर इन वॉटर सम ऑन लैंड एंड सम इन द स्काय दैट इज इन द एयर दस ऑल थिंग्स ऑन द अर्थ आर एसोसिएट विद द एयर वॉटर एंड लैंड एयर वॉटर एंड लैंड आर कॉल्ड द अर्थ एटमोस्फियर हाइड्रोस्पियर एंड लिथियोस्पियर रिस्पेक्टिवली मोर एवर डिफरेंट लिविंग थिंग्स एक्यूपाय दीज थ्री स्पियर्स ऑफ द अर्थ दीज लिविंग थिंग्स एंड द पार्ट्स ऑफ द लिथियोस्पियर हाइड्रोस्पियर एंड एटमोस्पियर विच दे ऑक्यूपाय आर टूगेदर कॉल्ड द बायोस्पियर दी स्पियर हैव फॉर्म ऑन द अर्थ नेचुरली वी हैव लर्न ऑल दिस इन द प्रीवियस स्टैंडर्ड द एटमोस्फियर इज द लेयर ऑफ एयर दैट सराउंड्स द अर्थ द सरफेस ऑफ द अर्थ कंपराइज वॉटर एंड लैंड दैट इज द हाइड्रोस्पियर एंड लिथियोस्पियर ऑफ दिस द हाइड्रोस्पियर एक्यूपाइज अ मच लार्जर पार्ट दैन द लिथियोस्पियर द प्रपोर्शन ऑफ लैंड एंड वॉटर ऑन द अर्थ सर्फेस we also look upon these natural components in solid liquid and gases from as resources in other words we use them to fulfill our requirements let us now study all these three components in details air the air in the atmosphere around the earth contains nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide six inert gases nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide water vapor and dust particles the troposphere contains about 80% of the total mass of gases in the air while this proportion is about 19% in the stratosphere further in the mesosphere and ionosphere the proportion of the mass of gases goes on decreasing gases are not found in the exosphere and beyond you can see that air is a mixture of several gases and is the chief constituents of the earth's atmosphere beside these gases air also contains water vapor and dust particles the amount of the gases in the air is greatest near the surface and decreases as we go higher and higher from the surface that is air becomes rare at higher altitudes the proportion of the constituents of air and some of their uses nitrogen helps living things to build the necessary proteins it is useful in the production of ammonia and in air tight packaging of food stuffs oxygen necessary for respiration in living things and for combustions carbon dioxide plants use it for producing their food using fire extinguisher agon used in electric bulbs helium used for obtaining low temperature and also for generating lift in airships neon used in decorative lights and for street lighting krypton Use in fluorescent tubes. Xenon used in flash photography. Water. Observe how much water is used and for what purposes. It is used in your house for a whole day. Record it in a chart like the one shown here. Discuss this data in the class. divide the total amount of water used in your house by the number of person to find out how much water each person needs you 
will see that it is almost impossible for us to spend even a single day without water. We need to drink 3 to 4 liters of water every day so that all our bodily function runs smoothly. Other living thing also requires water although the amount of water they needs may vary according to the size of their body. Thus we see that water is very important. If hydrogen gas burns in air, it combines with oxygen and water is formed. In nature, water occurs in three states. Water does not have color, taste or odor. Many substances readily dissolve in water. Therefore, water is a universal solvent. The blood of animals and the sap in plant contains a very high proportion of water. No living things can survive without water. Therefore, it is said that water is life. We get water from natural sources such as streams, rivers, ponds, springs and lakes. Man also digs wells and bore wells to lip ground water. Apart from this, man has also constructed bonds and dams on various sides on rivers. Due to the uncontrolled use of water for an increase in pollution, industry and farming. It is now in short supply water. Scarcity has become a serious problem in land. Land is seen in the form of stone, soil, big rocks. It is not a flat everywhere. It is a hilly in some places and flat in others. All terrestrial animals including man live on land. Some terrestrial dig burrows in the ground for shelter. This means that they use land for fulfilling their needs. We also use land for farming and for building houses and roads. We make use of plants and animals in the forces that grow on land. The minerals, crude oil and natural gases obtained from the earth are very important for us. It means that land is an important resource. Let us see exactly what land is made of. The land on earth also looks like this. If a pipeline is being laid in your neighborhood, observe carefully the pitch ducts for this purpose. You will see some layers under the land surface as shown in the accompanying figures. If the land has a mature soil, the topmost layer is formed by the decomposition of the remains of plants and animals. This layer is called humus. It is usually found in the dense forest. The land below this is full of sand, soil, small stones, worms and insects. Soil and pieces of bedrocks are found below this layer of land. The soil is immature. Further below this layer, the proportion of soil decreases and that of rock increases. This is the layer of bedrock. The main minerals in the soil are delivered from this rock. That is why soil in different regions in different the colors of texture of soil are both determined by the bedrocks. It is very necessary for man to control his greed. In other words, he must use these resources judiciously with the awareness that they are meant for all other living things and not just for mankind. Thank you.